Never Show the Monster. I'm Kelly Attaway. I'm Chelsea Hollander. And today we are talking about a very spooky episode of Boy Meets World. It is season five, episode 17. It's called And Then There Was Sean. And uh, it's a it's a fun little little Halloween special. I, was it a Halloween special? Proper? So it was not. It was originally not supposed to be a Halloween episode at all. But then because it's so creepy, they ended up making it a Halloween. OK, well, I'm glad that they did, because guess what our current theme is? It's Halloween specials <laughs> for television shows. <laughs> Um, this one was super fun. Yeah. When was the last time you had watched Boy Meets World? Oh, Boy Meets World itself. Probably, mm, I, whatever I give you is probably going to be a lot longer than it actually was. I think probably four years. Whoa. (laughs) Uh, And I probably watched this specific episode because it is one of my as we've talked about on this podcast multiple times, that is one of my most favorite episodes of television yeah, ever, it's made, fun. ever. And I reference it constantly. I don't think I had ever seen this one. And the last time I saw Boy Meets World was probably 1997. <laughs> like, oh, wow. I do not remember much of this show at all. Yeah, it taught me so much. It taught me that I was attracted to Ryder Strong. Yeah, that's hands down. And Mr. Feeney. No, that was a joke. That That was a joke. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was going to say, I mean, we grow up and then we, I mean, a strong um, male. (laughs) No, I. We love a uh, mustache. No, no, no. (laughs) What is it? Mr. Turner? Is it? Mr. Turner? The name. There is a. There's a teacher that ends up taking Sean in and taking care of him who's a bad boy oh, that drives a motorcycle. Uh, no. Like, that would probably be the one that I would be into today. I don't... Do you remember He's got who, a heart of gold. who played him? No, I don't know. He had a mullet, though. Curly mullet. You know, one of those really sweet 90s. Yeah, I'm super not mad. And, like, mullets are back right now in a big way. <laughs> and I got, like... I'm too chicken to pull the trigger but I think about it all the time and I've gotten a couple like to get a mullet. Yeah. I've gotten a couple like mullet, like faux mullet <laughs> haircuts. <laughs> like, like I got like, um, like a wannabe mullet last year, last summer. And then more recently I cut my bangs so that they were a mullet, but the like longer part of my hair folds over them. So you can't tell unless I, unless I pull my hair back. Yeah. Um, cause I'm too chicken to go all the way. And you know why? It's because I'm self-conscious about my cheeks. That's it's stupid. Your cheeks are beautiful. Okay. I'll go get one. I love you. All cheeks. right. Um, so that's <laughs> it for this week. I gotta go get a mullet. <laughs> get a mullet. I don't know if you can see from the camera. Oh, it's glare oh, city. It's terrible. You can just see that. I'm just making it really It close. looks like maybe he's got a big nose and I do it like that. looks pretty bad. He's got an earring. Oh, like a hoop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty nineties. Yeah, he he was super cool. Um, Oh, he's... Wait, hold on. Girl Meets New Teacher. Pulp Fiction. Anyway, they do have a new series called Girl Meets World, Mm -hmm. I think, where it's the daughter. I didn't... I have not watched any of those. But it is still... I um, probably won't. Mr. Savage. Corey and Topanga. Topanga. Mm -hmm. What's his his name? Fred? Is he Fred Savage? No, Fred's the older brother. I was going to say Corey Savage, but that's not right. Corey's just his name of the show. <laughs> and I was going to say ben, Mandy ben ben Savage. Savage. I was going to say Mandy Savage because he plays young Mandy Patinkin in Criminal Minds. Oh, that's cute. And he does a great job. He does an incredible job. Like, I don't know. When I think of Boy Meets World, I'm not like stellar acting. And then when this guy showed up in Criminal Minds, he like mimicked mandy patinkin's neuroses so well i was like holy shit like at first i almost thought like oh did criminal minds get like a cgi budget and we like de-aged mandy (laughs) patinkin and then you know that lasted for about really impressive you know half a second and then i immediately realized no that's Corey. (laughs) (laughs) he's crushing it yeah do you think it had to do with um Fred Savage, knowing Nico Montoya, way back when. Wait, I don't understand. Fred Savage. He's the kid in Princess Bride. His That's older right. brother's the kid in Princess oh my Bride. God. Yeah. So many connections. So beautiful. So wonderful. I love this. I love this. We love to see it. <laughs> Tabanga still seems pretty cool. Yeah. And 
I guess I don't know what Ryder Strong is up to. Isn't he still acting? He did Cabin Fever. Yeah, but that was like 15 years ago at this point. Okay, I guess it was. <laughs> Jesus. I don't like aging. Why do you have to be so rude? Yeah, I don't know what he's up to. Is he just being a heartthrob somewhere? Is he like rolling into bars like the Fonz and like hitting the jukebox? And his last thing was 2019 and it's a TV series short. It looks like it was animated and he was a voice. Um, oh. And so his last like on screen thing was Girl Meets World. The one he has nothing in production. Ugh, does he have an Instagram? Why don't I already follow him? Do I already follow him? Is this me if I knew not? About- I probably already follow him. He was in an episode of Castle. Oh, did you know Pod there was meets a world. sequel? Pod Meets World. They have a podcast. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Corey Topang. Oh, no. Will Friedel, Ryder Strong, and Danielle Fischel. Danielle. I'm sorry if I'm saying her name wrong. You guys know. That's Topanga. If I'm saying her name wrong, I'm say- I am only say the greats' names wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, so fuck you, Ryder Strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah whoops um yeah no he's on a podcast that's super cool so you guys go i'm gonna go listen to pod meets world to <gasps> listen do they have do they have an episode about this episode Jesse, i have great news oh my god i'm so excited he was in pulse three <laughs> <laughs> uh, guess we have to watch oh, it we have can no. we do a brighter strong series yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, I'm so excited. This has led us down a really beautiful path. I love this. <laughs> There's no way they haven't... Okay, they have a ton of episodes. Do they... There's no way they haven't talked about this episode yet, right? So so they're, they are, like, covering the show? Yeah, I think so. Should Mr. Feeney have let Corey retake his test? Or was he teaching him a valuable lesson? He was! That was Mr. Feeney's whole thing! On the fence. Yeah, they go, I think they go episode through episode. Oh <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, my God. You guys, please finish this episode and then go over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when I think of Boy Meets World, I think of the main three. Corey, Topanga. And Ryder. Sean, yeah. Sean. E- Eric, you don't count Eric in the I don't, main? like, think, of, think about him, though. Oh. Oh, he was always, like one of the centerpieces for me okay but my other favorite one is the place with squirrels episode where they go into the future nope i don't know and it also has a very deep lesson to be taught by the end of it just like they do in every episode yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. I this shit i love it so much <laughs> but was was eric like pretty consistently part of the plot or was it like this episode where he was sort of comic relief okay fine <laughs> to ask like with of those three main characters what i would consider main characters um is this what they are most known for i would uh i mean yes right yes yeah, okay yeah okay i was gonna say for eric or will friedel it could be kim possible or my date with the president's daughter <laughs> okay there were like four <laughs> Dating the President's Daughter movies all at once. Was that the one with Mandy Moore? No, that one is Chasing Liberty. Okay, so was it the one with the gal? <laughs> Virgin Suicides. Um, Kirsten Dunst? Yeah, that's her. Is there one where she's the President's Daughter? I don't remember if she's the President's Daughter or if she... Are you thinking of Good Dick? No. Wait, no, oh, Dick? Oh, maybe I am. Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good Dick is a different movie. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, so what was the name of this one? <laughs> My date with the president's okay, daughter. And who's the daughter? I think it might've been a Disney channel original movie. Um, poor girl. Oh, her name does not, um, come up in my brain. She does wear this like very early two thousands pink, I think velour type outfit, but it's like a, a belly shirt. And it's like one of those things where you're younger and you're like, yeah, yeah, that up. Uh, that outfit is the outfit that I want to wear to prom. <laughs> you know what's not a great sign is I Googled, well, no, I searched this in the IMDb search bar and nothing came up. I had to go to Google <laughs> to find my my IMDb link. My date with the president. This was a TV show. There's a song in it that's like, my date with the president. Dot. Nope, that's not the right one. This is TV. This is a TV show. You're looking at a different one. 
It's not. It's not a TV show. That's a separate one. Oh, well, Fredel is I saw it? it, too. What? My Date with the President's Daughter was a movie. I am looking at My Date with the President's Daughter, the TV show starring Will Fredel and Elizabeth Harnois. Fredel. Fine. <laughs> and is it new? No, this is from 1998. Oh, my God. What? I don't know. Okay, hold on. I have to look at it because now I'm so confused. What? The Wonderful World. My Date with the President's <laughs> Daughter. My Date with Her. Man, maybe it is. Maybe that's why I know the song. Maybe it's like the theme song. I kept singing the song over and over, and I just thought it was a song in the sh- in the movie. No, okay, no, there's but a movie too. A sh- there's a movie. Is it the show? Maybe IMDb is tagged wrong. That makes me feel better, but still not great. Oh, oh no. Okay, I see what I see. What has happened here? Okay. Yes, My Date with the President's Daughter is a feature-length movie, but it is part of a series called The Wonderful War- World of Disney. Okay, I did see The Wonderful okay. World of Disney, and I was wondering because that was around the same time. Okay. 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 We feel better. <laughs> we feel better about this. Um, This has a 6.2 out of 10. We've done That's way good. worse movies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this episode has like an a nine or an eight point something. Good. This episode's probably one of the highest rated items that we have talked about. Maybe the highest rated. I think it is. It's got a 9.4. Jesus. A 9.4. <laughs> I, I don't even think we can. I don't think there's a movie we can watch that's higher. No, that's fake. Um. Uh, uh, okay. Do we want to get into it? We're 20 yeah, minutes we totally in and we can. haven't like discussed what this episode <laughs> is. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, let's really get into it. So, um. Let's set the scene. They're at John Adams High. They're in Feeney's classroom. You guys know what that is, Feeney's classroom. I'm just assuming that everyone has at least a little bit of context because I'm not going to give you a full bl- background of this TV series. Mr. Feeney, hot old teacher. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sweet old man. I don't know how to uh, describe him. Wait, um, now I got to look up young Mr. Feeney. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I mean, you should probably look up his like the actor's no, name that's what and I'm gonna that do. Just, I just, okay. it's gonna take me a couple clicks because i don't know his name <laughs> i kind of want to okay can, i want to know what you get for young mr feeney versus young <laughs> okay, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna look up oh okay that young mr feeney canceled he i uh he aged well uh he doesn't i yeah he, he kind of well. scares me when he's young you know who he reminds me of when he's young um the vampire character in the monsters. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that checks out. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. 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 I see it. Uh, so we love Feeney. He is uh, an older teacher. And uh, Corey and Topanga are the long-standing couple in the show. Since way back when, since the first season, they have been together forever. And at some point, Sean becomes their friend. So in this episode, we see that Topanga and Corey have split up. And I don't remember what happened in the episode previous, but they are an on again, off again couple in the series, mostly on for the most part. Yeah. Um, but they were off during this episode. And in this episode, Sean, the friend who, um, a little background on him, he doesn't like have like a stable family life. He's kind of like the kid from the rough side of the tracks, but he and Corey are besties. Corey is like, has a really, he lives in, Upper middle class home, like yeah, a loving he's family. Like the, um, he's like, leave it to Beaver. Yeah, yeah exactly. He, he's very he's sweet. The Cleavers over there. Yeah, exactly. And then you have Eric, Eric who's the brother, but he's going to come in later, and I don't need to introduce him right now. Anyway, they're sitting down <laughs> for class, and uh, Corey asks Sean to switch him spots so he doesn't have to sit next to Topanga because he is struggling with uh, being next to her after them breaking up. And so Sean uh, reluctantly agrees. And he does say a line in this that uh, tugged at my heartstrings. But it was like, I'm only between you two. I'm not in the middle of you two. I know. Because uh, he loves them both. And he did not want to be a person causing any issues between them, which was very, very sweet. And then the a guy has... Uh, His name is Kenny, and he asked Topanga for a pencil, and then Sean jumps in, and he's like, no, you cannot ask her for a pencil. 
And then he's like, I know what a pencil is, sir. And then he gets very angry and animated. And he does come in between. (laughs) And you can tell he is like almost about to break. Like he (laughs) is fighting back a laugh because it is hilarious. (laughs) It's great. Um, And then... I think I don't remember. You think I don't know what asking for a pencil means? I ask for pencils around here, (laughs) but (laughs) it's great. Every every line in this episode is delivered perfectly, and it is beautiful. And And I'm just gonna say it's the most perfect episode of TV that I have experienced in my life. Dense with jokes. It's like joke, 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 joke. Like I was so surprised. I. I didn't remember it being this funny. Yeah. And I don't know if they're all this funny. Oh, This okay. episode just hits really hard. Yeah. Um, this was like, bam, bam, bam. Make you laugh. Yeah. Make you laugh. Make you laugh. I will say it had been a long, long ass time since I had watched something with a laugh track and it was disorienting. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, who's, who is this? Man, it has been a long time since there has been. I watched some friends the other day and it took me out of it really bad. So I did, I couldn't keep watching it because I used to watch that as like one of my comfort shows. Oh, yeah. And then after a while, I was like, I can't. It doesn't it doesn't have the draw for me anymore. Friends might have been the last thing I watched with a laugh track because I had never seen friends growing up. And I it like came to Netflix back in 2014 mm-hmm, or something. Yeah. And so I watched it and it doesn't work if you watch it for the first time as a grown up in 2014 that sounds right um but i i can't remember the last thing i watched like i can't remember if i've heard a laugh track since 2014 before this yeah Yeah. and uh i didn't i feel like i just focused on the show on this one and i didn't even notice there was a laugh track this one didn't take me out of it as much as the last one did but after the first disorientation i i like I was back into it. I like remembered how to watch shows with a laugh track, but yeah, <laughs> your brain that first switched. One, I was, I was like, like, "What the this fuck?" Is how it's gonna be. Uh, so they he ends up interrupting the class. So Ryder interrupts the class. Feeny's upset by it, mm-hmm. and then Feeny gives them detention. Yep. Um, at some point, there's also a creepy janitor that shows up and then walks by the window. <laughs> That's actually how they get detention, right? Because like Ryder is causing the scene. And it's, like, happening over and over again. Like, Feeney separates them, and then Ryder erupts again, and then Kenny says something, and somebody shouts at Kenny. And then Feeney <laughs> says, if there's one more silly interruption in this class, you all get detention. And then the the janitor opens the door and very slowly empties the trash can. But the janitor is, like, meant to be spooky looking. Yep. Like, no speaking, no facial expressions. Very He's pale. practically Slicked black and hair. white. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of pieces of this episode are odes to other horror movies. And this was an ode to one of the horror movies. His name tag said Freddy. Oh, was he? And Freddy Krueger was was a janitor at a school. Yeah. So that was like a whole thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hey, but there are Easter eggs throughout this episode that have to do with different horror movies. The name too. And then there was Sean. It was, it's like the Agatha Christie murder mystery. And then there was none. Mm, And like, you see it in the plot too, where they're like, trying to guess who the murderer is mm-hmm. oh yeah mm-hmm. spoiler there's a murderer what? <laughs> um they did base this episode off of uh scream because it had come out recently and i know what you did last summer i think it all it said it was a parody of then recent horror movies so so it came out in 97 96 97 what what year did we say it was 98 it came out Febu- it must have been 98 so it wasn't yeah. a halloween episode it came out february 27th 1998 Whoa. Yeah, but it is it is the creepiest, most Halloween-y episode that I feel like they have. I don't remember any other episodes really uh, capturing this. Anyway, so let's keep going. Um, so they get detention, and while in detention, uh, they start fighting for some reason. Did they start fighting? Feeney gets upset. Feeney gets, like, actually upset, and it's not funny, and then he leaves. Mm-hmm. Um And then I think that Sean, I don't know. There are pretty golden jokes around this time as well, probably. Uh, They do pull up a, nope. I think that he yells at Kenny. Yeah, everybody's mad at Kenny. And Kenny's like, why the fuck are you guys mad at me? And I'm like, yeah, good point. There's no reason for them to be mad at you. Everyone's just really touchy about Corey and Topanga. And I liked this about the episode. They like touch on it. They so they get like locked in the detention room after Feeney leaves, 
and the janitor comes by and they're like, do you have keys? And he hang, he like holds up his giant grip of keys, but he won't let them out. And I don't know, we get to talking about how like one of the like, what do you even call those? They didn't even have these in school when we were in school. The like the maps, the pulley maps, the That's pulley not maps. Right. Yeah, it's a pulley map over the blackboard. <laughs> yeah, pulley map. It's a pulley map. And it like rolls up and on the board, I don't even remember what it said, but it was in blood. It was like, you're oh, next yeah. or whatever. I'm coming to get it, you. No one gets out alive. No one gets out alive uh, in blood. And we start talking about like, oh, somebody's going to die first. It's going to be Kenny. And like the core group are like. Because well, the, the other gal us. is one of the is yeah, one of the Angela, main she is. Right? Angela. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're like, well, it can't be us. And it's like clearly like a <laughs> cheat out to the audience to be like, well, obviously, obviously. it has to be Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> he's fully only here to get killed first. And then I think after this, the they hear a, uh, like a thumping and um, they're like, oh, no, this is... Um, I think then Sean tries to explain it. So Sean is the one, the character in the movie that is... He's Randy. Is his name Kenny in screen? No, it's Randy. Randy. Yeah. What's the actor's name? Oh, Jamie. Okay. Is that right? Kennedy. Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we got there. We got there. Um, so Sean is the Randy and he is trying to say what's going to happen next, basically. And he's trying to explain what the thumping is. And um, they said something about it being a heartbeat and someone's going to be murdered or something at this point. Yeah, he's like, it's a metaphor for our increasing <laughs> heartbeat while we're afraid. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah impressive. Uh, and then they open the door and it is Eric and... Joey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, Jack. Matthew Lawrence. Not played by Joey Lawrence. Played uh, by Matthew yeah. Lawrence. I was like, he was in the, the other show. Brother? Yeah. So so Eric and Jack are at the door, and uh, Eric's holding a basketball, so it's him. it was him bouncing the basketball. And then suddenly the lights go off, <laughs> and then they flicker back on, and then everything's fine. And then Angela screams, and then this sets her up as a screaming lady. And they turn around and she's pointing at Kenny and Kenny has a pencil through his head and he then slides down and there's no blood. There's no blood in this episode at all, but people do die (laughs) and he just like slides down. And then this is where Corey has a joke and he goes up and he's like, we'll always remember that Kenny was this tall. Cause there's like a little pencil mark on the wall. It's so funny. <laughs> so stupid. So dumb. But so perfect. <laughs> this was super fun. <laughs> and then they try, they go outside and I, he's like explaining different rules of the horror movie. And he's like, oh, if we turn, the, he's like, and then the, the mass killer will run behind us. And then they all turn and then it runs behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, and stuff like that just keeps happening. Uh, so at some point, I think that the, uh, they, he, he says it's Feeny. I think he says at this point it's Feeney that did it. And um, then he says, like, all the exits are chained up. So then they all run to all the exits. And then suddenly a creepy song starts to play over the PA system. And uh, Feeney appears. And then they're like, good job, old man. I just, I loved this running scene because it was, like, two (laughs) tropes in one. It was the Scooby-Doo running through the hallways. Oh, yeah. The um, trope. And it was also Breakfast Club. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Man, there's so much nods to so many movies in this yeah. episode that I, it makes me love it so much more. But yeah, then Feeney's there. Feeney's there, and we're congratulating him. He got us good. Yeah, and then he falls, and there's a, a knife. Not knives. Scissors. There's a pair of scissors stuck in his back, and they all freak out. And I can't remember what they do. Do they just scream? Do they run into the room? They run back into the room, right? And then they try to decide what to do. And after that, they... I think they start to hear the trash can, the creepy... Oh, no. Eric says, oh, it was definitely that creepy janitor. And then Sean goes, well, he's dead now. Good job. (laughs) Because their new (laughs) hypothesis is that everybody that they suspect is the next person to die. Yeah, exactly. And he goes out... I think Eric goes out and then he runs into uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, who plays Jennifer Love, 
Pfefferman, yeah. um, who, who they refer to as Feffy. Uh, it turns out, fun fact, that Will Friedle was actually dating Jennifer Love Hewitt during this time. And that's oh. why she got on the show is because the director was like, hey, bring your girlfriend on. This is also the best. Like, she just premiered in a really famous horror movie a couple months ago. Okay. And now we're going to bring her in. Uh, so nice timing on that, guys. Uh, that also, like, makes the me feel better. The makeup scene was super extreme. It and you were like, so that was aggressive. really intense. Because it's not like <laughs> they don't, like, this is the minute they're meeting. Yeah. Uh, Eric and he says, immediately like, tongue down the throat. It yeah, was, it he's was like, bad. can I call you Feffy? And she's like, everybody does. And then suddenly, yeah, tongue in mouth, up against the wall. I was she's like, like, wow, you're friendly. We got to talk about consent, Eric. Like, you got to be like, like, I'm not even mad. If you want to make out like five seconds after meeting, go for it. But you both got to be like, do you want to make out? Yes, let's do that. Like, we need, mm -hmm, <laughs> we mm -hmm. got to have some communication here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. I did feel very uncomfortable when I watched it again. I was like, oh, that would not, I would not be comfortable with that yeah, today. Yeah. Um, but I do remember the 90s being very much like that. And For I'm sure. glad that we're not like that anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty extreme. And then I think that they, they find the janitor. He is in the tub and Angela... No, Feffy screams at it first, and then Angela screams, and then she shared, stares at her, and she's like, no, I'm the one. Yeah. I scream here. I'm the screamer. <laughs> That's her um, whole deal. Which is fun, because you guys remember when we did I Know What You Did Last Summer, and I could not understand why Jennifer Love Hewitt was screaming at the thing she was screaming at, yeah. because it didn't make sense. <laughs> and then the action that came after the scream was always really subdued. So it was great. That, that part was perfect. <laughs> I don't think that there's a part in this movie that I'm not going to say is perfect. This and, movie. Yeah. That's how much she loves it. Episode. <laughs> this is a movie. This is a movie. <laughs> this is a film. man. 9.4. <laughs> a full 20-minute film. 24-minute film. Uh, we just did a three-minute film. I'm not I'm not taking this judgment right now. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> I am on your side. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then they suggest that they... I think. They go to the library uh, for some reason. I'm not really sure. I, they may have suggested that Wait. they split up. <laughs> Before oh, they go to the something? library, yes, the phone call. So <laughs> they're okay, in, the, okay. in the hallway outside of Feeney's classroom, and the like payphone rings. And I think Feffy answers it first, but the the funny part is when Eric answers it. Because he's like, uh, uh-huh. Uh huh. And then he like covers the receiver to talk to the rest of the group. And he's like, it's the killer. Uh huh. Uh huh. And he's making like, you know, like the yabber mm -hmm. hand to be faces. like, Ugh, they won't <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, oh, no. So when he first, um, is it Jack who answers the phone first? Somebody answers the phone Somebody first. And first. the killer is like, What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> like oh, yeah, it is it's Jack. Scream. And he's like, oh, yeah, that one. He does talk oh, and about. And then he says, yeah, he's like, I loved the one with the hottie with the gal from Party of Five. And then Feffy, ne Jennifer Love Hewitt, goes, Nev Campbell. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, duh. <laughs> Man, this is so good. And this the jokes is so hit good. So hard. <laughs> uh, and I haven't even, I don't even think we've mentioned, like, whenever they talk about different things they refer to it being in a horror movie like mm -hmm. at one point when eric comes in for the first time he was like yeah yeah, yeah everything was fine except the, there was a bunch of blood in the showers he's like oh, like the movie blood in the showers <laughs> yeah and like that's what they uh do throughout the episode and even in one part uh i think sean's like yeah this is from the movie killer killer you're the killer <laughs> just everything in it is just perfect yeah um, that means it's one of us just like in the movie one of us <laughs> Oh, love it. <laughs> but whenever they, and whenever they do the scary movie thing and then uh, Eric does the talking, he goes, they go, oh, perfect. We can use the phone. And then Eric rips it out of the wall, yeah. the corner of the wall. <laughs> and then he says, yeah, we can hit him with this, you know, ruining the plan to communicate with the outside world. <laughs> um, and then he says that the killer wants them to stay put. So then he, they end up running to the, the library and they're walking around and I think Eric says, like, when did the school get a library? Jack responds to that with, like, it's a new adventure every day. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> which and I like don't remember Jack being on the show at all. So I don't remember their relationship. Um, but the way I read that was like the way I talk to my cat. Like when he experiences something new, I'm like, yeah, big day, buddy. <laughs> I think that's accurate about their relationship. Uh, he So then they end up, uh, as they're in the library, they're walking down an aisle. And this, this like, masked character in a, a cloak and everything is wearing, like, a skull mask. So then we kind of see the skull mask kind of um, look through some of the shelves. And then you see Feffy get crushed quote unquote by books. Books <laughs> softly fall on her and she's laying down and she is um quote unquote dying. And then Eric leans down and she's like, I I saw the killer. And he's like, no, it's okay. Just save your breath. And she's like, no, I'm dying. I have to tell you. <laughs> and then he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally do that. And so he leans down and then he gets killed by the second stack of books from the, the sh- uh, shrouded character. And it's like 10 books. Yeah. It's like not. And, it, and they slowly <laughs> just fall and she's like, like, yeah. it's not even allowed, like, no, <laughs> Whoa, I don't know what that was. It sounded like my cat hugging something. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but that's, it's a very soft landing for them both. And they both are, are killed by this tiny stack of books. This next part I loved so much. Uh, so then after they find Eric dead, uh, Jack finds him and he's so upset. But he is upset because he can't pay for his rent anymore. And then he runs. That was my roommate. (laughs) He's like, that was my best friend. That was my roommate. I can't afford my rent anymore. (laughs) So then he runs for the window to jump out. Which, like, how big is this school? I don't know. Like, how many floors up are we? Two? Probably just two. They would have been fine. Probably maybe a broken leg. (laughs) Um, But they, Angela goes to be like, she's like, no, Jack, Sean is still your roommate. You can make rent. And then the hooded character just comes up behind them and just oh, pops them uh, over. I, oh, Sean is still the roommate. Okay. When she ran out there, I thought that she was saying Eric was still the roommate. And I was like, oh, is this like all, uh, like, are we trying to scare Corey and Topanga back into being together? Like, is this a coordinated effort amongst no. the group? Like, I, I didn't. I didn't, I was bad at names. Okay. Uh, So when this episode (laughs) ended, I was like, so what was that with Angela? (laughs) Like, why did we have that scene? Okay. Thank you. So Jack is Sean's older brother. But he was his strange older 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 brother. brother. Yeah. But Sean didn't have like a house to live in. He met his older brother. They all live together with. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, no problem. Um, (laughs) And then. (laughs) And then uh, now we're left with the three mains. We've got Corey, Tabanga, and Sean. And then they just have a moment where that character or the the killer is in front of them. And he just goes and he takes Corey's hand and Topanga's hand and puts them together. And they asked, why are you doing this? And then Sean goes up and he takes off the mask and he sees himself. And then there was Sean. And then there was Sean. Boom, boom, boom. Fuck. And then he wakes up and he he's in detention. Yep. Um, and is this a part where he goes up? Oh, yeah. This is the touching part. This is the part in Boy Meets World that always makes your, you feel warm and fuzzy and feel like you learned something at the end of the day. Yeah, we're hitting feels here at the end. <sighs> Straight up. Uh, he goes up and he tells Feeney, like, you can let everybody go. This is my fault. It's because um, Corey and Topanga have been together since I've known them. And I'm not dealing well with their separation. And if if they aren't together, then what's what's right in this world? What's good in this world? And he's just having like this whole attack of like just just feeling terrible about the situation. And he's kind of blaming himself for it. And then Feeney, I think, just says it's not your fault. You you didn't have anything to do with this. Well, and then even like Topanga says that like Topanga and Corey basically do like. The talk that you give kids when you're getting divorced. <laughs> They're like, it's not you, bud. We still love you. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, aw, Shawnee. And I think that that's what this was supposed to be, is to, for all the kids going through something, to just remind them that it's not their fault, no matter what is happening in their world. But the, the tendency in those situations is they might act out and they might have a hard time. And I think that they did this in a very funny and a very beautiful way. Yeah. 
And then we do get a Feeny dream at the end. Yeah, that one's great. The Feeny dream is so the best. fun. And he's just dreaming that the class is very organized and well studied. And he's like calling on them and they're answering his questions. And everybody ends their answer with like, sir, Feeny, sir. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like standing up out of their desk to answer. And he's so. Except for Topanga. Her answer was the best because it was like, I'm sorry, Feeny, you've stumped, sir, Feeny, sir, you've stumped me this time. <laughs> and-, <laughs> and then he asks Angela, like, um, the uh, what's Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem? And she answers. But then Corey stands up and is like, actually, I have disproved this. I have a thesis coming out soon. And when I accept my field medal, I'll be sure to thank you, Mr. Feeney, sir. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Oh, cute. And then Feeney wakes up from crumpled paper being thrown at him in a screaming classroom that does not respect him whatsoever. No. <laughs> and then he picks up the scissors and he holds them like he's going to murder the entire Yeah, class. that was very stressful, huh? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, perfect episode. 10 out of 10. 9.4 out of 10. 9.4 out of 10. <laughs> that takes a lot to get that. Would recommend watching it. I paid for it on Prime Video. It is available on Disney Plus. Uh, but my Disney Plus last night was not not being a friend. I don't have so. that one. So I just paid the like, I don't know, two bucks. It's like $2. Yeah. yeah. Totally worth it. Going to watch it again. Going to watch it probably five times. <laughs> but I just, I liked how I... I haven't, and I haven't seen this episode, and I say a while, probably three to four years, but it, I laughed out loud at a lot of the jokes. Like, I did it too. Slapped. Like, I, yeah. it's great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so good. It had an 8.5 Nielsen rating during its initial broadcast. How did we measure that? I don't understand how Nielsen ratings work. You have like I'm- a box, right? They had a box where they could state how it was i just don't understand the rating portion of it so i i listened to this this podcast which i love it is so long running it's um i don't know it's probably like 12 years old at this point and i love it it's called stop podcasting yourself like stop hitting yourself stop hitting yourself stop podcasting yourself. you get it um and it's hosted <laughs> by <laughs> by two comedians dave shumka and graham clark it's canadian and i love it every episode they like have another comedian on and they basically just shoot the shit like in the early days of the now i'm just doing a big ad for stop podcasting yourself in the early (laughs) days of the podcast they did like a bunch of segments the show was like segment 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 and they all had like theme songs because um dave one of the hosts is like a musician and um oh chelsea i've i think i've mentioned they they have like a spinoff podcast called um, our debut album where mm, they mm-hmm. they set out to write um, write hit songs in under an hour. So they wrote like 12 quote unquote hit songs in under an hour um, for their, their debut album. And it is so fun to listen to them like write a song, come up with a melody, come up with the lyrics, like talk about song structure. Uh, it's very fun and it's very funny and, um, but stop podcasting yourself. Yeah. It used to be a bunch of segments. I don't know. I'm getting off track. Anyway, Dave and his <laughs> wife, Abby, uh, were a Nielsen family for a little while. Mm. So they had little Nielsen. I imagine people meters like, yeah, people meters. I imagine them as like pagers that yeah. they just wore around and it monitored what, it is. what they were watching, but I don't understand how that translates into ratings. I don't either. It doesn't really say what they're measuring. I guess just you know that you what I watched think it, it is. Yes, I think that that is how it used to be determined. That's weird. Is that you just watched it. But I don't know, like, are all of these IMDb ratings Nielsen ratings? Or are these, like, I went into IMDb and clicked my stars? Oh, those are clicked my stars. Then that's <laughs> almost more impressive to me. No, not almost. That is more impressive to me. <laughs> because, like... I don't know. People who use the internet are jaded. And so like a bunch of cynics logged on to IMDb and they were like, you know what? 10 out of 10 for this episode. <laughs> yeah. And it's been, so the reception has been widely positive. Um, a retrospective by the AV club referred it, referred to it as the best episode of the series. Screen Whoa. Rant called it the perfect tribute to horror movies in the nineties. Yard Barker referred to it as the greatest episode of any series on TGIF. 
IGN ranked it in their list of best episodes of the series. BuzzFeed ranked it as episode four of its list of the 15 best Halloween t- TV episodes ever. Whoa, we should take a peek at that list. Yeah, I tried to look at it, but the... Oh, hold on. If I look at the references. I need to look at the references. Damn, I'm dumb. <laughs> I clicked on BuzzFeed, and I was like, just give me an article for BuzzFeed. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not proud of myself for this. Um, and... Uh, U.S. Weekly included it in their list of best Halloween episodes. And it said the episode holds a 9.5 rating on IMDb. So what motherfuckers went in and gave it a lower rating? Yeah, what the fuck? That makes me angry. I am... Oh, I thought I was going to be just very happy tonight and there was going to be no anger. But right now I am just... I'm seething. I'm seething. I did find the BuzzFeed list, though. I'll put it in the links. (gasps) What? Uh Uh-oh. Oh, no. So, um, Did it just Mac- go down another point? No, not that I saw. I hope not. No, I'm looking at... Oh, this looks fun. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at the um, the, the the TV... Uh, yeah, BuzzFeed's 15 best uh, Halloween TV shows, episodes. And um, some of these... <gasps> sorry. Which, I'm which just one are you excited. asking at? Are I'm we just, just going to do all of them? Is this yeah. Just- oh, yeah, this is our first yeah. 15... 15 episodes <laughs> hey number six Seriously. number six is the one we're doing no it's not that's that was my first that's a gasp. different one that's a different oh, one no. that's why i gasped and so now i'm like uh oh so should i watch this one and then make a decision no okay so here's why i want to do the other one okay for the listener oh, i do love that episode oh sorry this is this is gonna be difficult maybe we have to do like five episodes an episode That'd be okay. Um, so, so for the home listener, our next episode is meant to be an episode of Bob's Burgers. It is called The Hauntening, uh, episode three of season six. And the reason I want to do it is because Louise says that nothing scares her. And so the family like plans around that. And the reason I want to do it is because nothing scares me. So we're going to have to find something to scare you. Yeah. If y'all would The Hauntening me, that would be super dope let's do it okay. we'll do it we can okay. do it but now i know it's ruined no, um, it's not <laughs> i have faith but this looks fun too yeah uh buzzfeed lists bob's burgers episode full bars which is season three episode two i know that i've watched it i don't remember it but i love their little costumes louise is going as edward scissorhands and tina is a mummy and I don't know what the boy is. That sounds, that looks, okay. I know that it looks troubling. I'm sure that it's just uh, trying to pay homage to a, a great leader of Africa. Yeah, we'll find out. Um, do you watch Bob's Burgers? No, you know what? so Save I'm excited this. to watch this. Oh, okay. Save this. Yeah, we'll save it. <laughs> Yeah, this we're just giving you a little looks, sneaky peeky. <laughs> this still does look troubling, but not as troubling as the community. Yeah. Oh, still. that looks troubling. Oh, that looks troubling to me. Yeah, maybe. But like, community had a way of doing those things. It wasn't too troubling. But that's what I'm saying about Bob's Burgers. Like, good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. Very good point. Uh, but now it makes me want to do the community one too. And it makes me want to do the Freaks and Geeks one. I know. every yeah. There are like 10 episodes on this that I'm like, maybe we should extend this to be the longest series we've ever done. Uh, I don't need to do the Friends one. I don't need to do the Parks and Rec one. So I need to do the Parks and Rec one, but it's not that episode that I want to do. Oh, do they have another Halloween? They have a different one. Okay. Um, there's also New Girl on here. Yeah, I don't know that one. The Friends one, I do have uh, this episode. My f- One of my friends from work... Um, he replaced my face. He put my face on Phoebe's face and printed it out and put it all over my desk for my birthday. I do love that. You yeah, was, it was um, really it was really nice because he always compared me to Phoebe. Yeah. No, oh, that's cute. I it like was that. very it was very nice. Um, I I want to do the Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> I don't know. So I haven't seen much Curb Your Enthusiasm. And I want to do it. See Always Sunny. I I love Always Sunny. Um. I have only seen a couple episodes of, of Curb Your Enthusiasm while I was on a trip to San Francisco a couple years ago with my friend Savannah. We just like, I don't know, it was like one of the DVDs in the Airbnb. Mm-hmm. So we, we put it in and 
I was so stressed out the whole time. <laughs> that show, like, we started with season one, and I was so stressed out. I was just so anxious all the time watching it. I, like, had to leave the room. <laughs> like, he's... Have you watched it? Yeah. Do you like, like it? like a curmudgeon. Yeah. I mean... But curmudgeon is fun. There were just, like... It was misunderstanding after misunderstanding after misunderstanding. <laughs> and I was, like losing my mind <laughs> oh god i'm like like even now talking about stressed. it okay I'm like, we will not like, <laughs> do curb your enthusiasm wait like, is that activated. the scary one is that the scary one that it, we can <laughs> would that be the <laughs> did we find it did we do it <laughs> no it's not it's not fear it's cringe <laughs> like, oh, oh so god, it's a thin line it's that? a thin line we can we can why figure out how to cross like, it oh god <laughs> I got a bunch of TikToks like, to send you if you're. I feel like I feel like we'll find the cringe line and just no. into scary. We can find it. Oh, I'll find it. It just made me think of like um, much ado about nothing, mm. like Shakespearean comedies where you're like, "Well, you just talk to each other for Christ's sake. Yeah. Like, just say a sentence, and then we can circumvent all of this drama." <laughs> That's like a generational thing. Like the amount of People I talk to in my family that are of that age. Who just don't talk, who just don't say They just anything. don't talk to each other and they're unwilling to communicate. They're unwilling to communicate. <laughs> just a, a complete unwillingness to communicate. Oh my God. I'm not even advocating for like talking about your feelings. That's not, that's no, not I'm even not, I'm not even saying that. Just I'm not even trying to get that far. Simply <laughs> saying like one thing so you guys are on the same page. It yes. is so difficult. Like in the couple episodes I watched... It was Larry constantly coming up with, like, complex lies so that his wife wouldn't think thing X. Mm -hmm. Like, but you didn't do thing X. So just just tell just her. Just say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't oh, know. So it, um, it just stressed me out. It just stressed me out. <laughs> yeah. So we don't know what our two episodes after that are. So you guys just heard us describe them. This is yeah, coming right out pretty in. soon. Yeah. I was like, so you should tell us. <laughs> right in. Yeah, for sure. Um, let us know if you have uh, your favorite TV shows for spooky season or TV episodes for spooky season that we could we could do episodes on right in. You can find us on Twitter at No Show Monster. You can email us at No Show at gmail.com. We would love to hear your ideas and like add to our ever growing list. And maybe this becomes like annual or yeah. we just like do, do TV it. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we need, I was going to say whenever we need lighter times, but I am super glad we're doing that this month because Halloween episodes are always such a treat. A trick or treat, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, October is my favorite time of year because of the movies that would play on TV. And we've talked about this, the movies that would play on TV and the TV episodes that would come on. It is like, it's my Christmas. That doesn't sound. Yeah, it's just, that's just but another it one. is. It is my Christmas. I don't do anything for Christmas. That's my. That's my slow time. You guys might get a ton of episodes from us. <laughs> yeah, Christmas just because we'll, we'll just have... do live streams. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I do want to talk about movies coming out. Yeah, there are so many. Yes, I really want to watch Barbarian. I do I've, too. I've heard. I have not heard. I am actively avoiding. So I have, uh, the only reason that this is on my radar is because I have heard good things, but <gasps> I, I, I'm I so do excited. not know what it is about. I don't know who's in it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. I do know who's in it. And I sent, I, I tried to send you something about it a long time ago, but I think it might've even been in like production. When oh, I sent shit. You something. oh, so maybe when I watch it, it'll like ring a bell. Um, Yes, I'm excited oh, about so, that one. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about the Hellraiser, the new Hellraiser. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. That's it. I I was shocked. It was a Hulu. I was too. Is it a movie or a series? It's a series, isn't it? Am I making that up? Oh, I, just... I thought it was a movie. Because the way that the trailer was paced made me feel more like it was a series. Um, I can't. I got it. It is not. It is a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> Sorry, okay. guys. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that it's a movie. There's also another movie that's... Oh, Dahmer. We had talked about that coming out. Is it yeah. out? I think it is. 
I think it is. I saw a little bit of backlash about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, um, I am concerned about watching it. I feel like it's going to make me very uncomfortable. Well, that's probably good. Like, you don't want to be like Dahmer, mm, cozy. You know what I mean? Well, then it, he shouldn't have been played by Evan Peters. Yeah. Are we going to come out of this sexually attracted to Dahmer? <laughs> I hope not. No. I feel like a lot of people were, right? I feel like he was one. Was that, that a thing? I thought Ted Bundy was, but I didn't Ted think Dahmer Bundy for was. sure was. I think Dahmer might have been. I just remember, you know what? You know what might be happening is that I listen to modern podcasts mm-hmm. where they talk about his swimmer's shoulders. So What? He was a swimmer. He's got okay. swimmer's shoulders. It, there was a movie that was made a while ago, and I think Jeremy Renner played Dahmer. No, that's wrong to me. That doesn't that doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> it was after I watched it after I read uh, My Friend Dahmer, the, the graphic novel you got. You know, I still haven't read that. I got that for you and did not read it. <laughs> it's good. I liked it. Um, and uh, the, the author is, ugh, I feel like I'm going to mess this up. Uh, Durf Backdorf? Durf Backdorf? Something like that. But he also did know. a graphic novel about, because he was a trash man. Oh. And he did another graphic novel about him being a trash man. We also got that. Oh, how was it? But he's just, like, fun. Uh, I didn't read it. Ryan read it. And he then told me a bunch of interesting facts about garbage. So oh, cool. It is informative. I bet it's super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I need to read that. I, um, I don't love a graphic novel. I want to. I want to really bad. It just doesn't work for my brain. Um, but yeah, I want to give that one a go. Did I send you? Um, I either am about to ask you about a gift that I have sent you or I'm about, to, about spoil to spoil a gift that I will send you. So <laughs> uh, did I send you a graphic novel about Ed Gein? Yeah. I think it's OK. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a it's a. Um, I don't remember who the artist was, but I know that he wrote it in collaboration with a true crime author whose name is Harold Schechter. Harold Schechter collaborated on it. And so he like uh, brought the facts like he wrote a well-researched book on Ed Gein. Um, It's called like deviant or deranged or it's a D adjective. Um, and I, I did get myself a copy of, of that one about Ed Gein as well. I haven't read it yet. Um, but I'm super excited to. And I listened to an interview with Ed, with, uh, with Ed Gein, you know, with oh. the murderer, Ed hmm. Gein, um, uh, with Harold Schechter. And he, it was interesting to hear him talk about how he like thought about making art from the history he was like, I want to be true to the history, but I also understand that we're telling a story. And sometimes like truth in a story is different from truth of literal fact. Oh. You know, like I like in a story, I'm trying to convey a message yeah, to that's you. True. And there is a truth to that message. But maybe I have to like fudge the facts a little to get you to the truth of my experience or of this event, you know? And so it was interesting to hear that, to hear his thought process around that after having just written like historical research things for so many years. So I'm excited to read that one. Um, Not excited enough to actually do it, I guess, because this came out like a year ago. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say we're both, I think got a backlog of things we need to catch up on. Yeah. We've been busy, but I'm really enjoying I mean, we've only done one TV show so far, but I'm really, I really this had fun, fun with this one. Yeah. So write in and tell us what you guys want our other episodes to be, <laughs> um, or episode, but I think we might have an agreement on what our last episode is going to be. So we will let you guys know what that is later, but get excited. It's one of the best of all the TV specials. Oh, I'm excited. It's going to be so nice. <laughs> oh, this is such a like, yeah, I, know, I just I feel, feel so warm. Cozy. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> Those are cozy series, guys. Thank you for taking taking this journey with us. Oh, Grab that pumpkin yay. spice latte, throw on that scarf. Oh, get up. <laughs> yeah, so did we do it? 
We did it. We did it. Okay. Thank you guys for joining us. This was so fun. I hope that you watched it. Please watch this episode. It was what? Season five, episode 17 called. And then there was Sean of Boy Meets World. It was super fun. It's, you know, kids TV. So it was, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, maybe. Yeah, super Um, short. Super short, but like so So dense with jokes. (laughs) So fun. Give her a watch. And next week we will be doing uh, the episode of Bob's Burgers called The Hauntening. And in the meantime, please um, rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. Like and subscribe. (laughs) Yeah, like and subscribe. (laughs) Ring the bell. Um, The the iTunes uh, reviews, like help us the mm-hmm. most but just do it wherever you listen to your podcasts and um tell your friends if you're liking this please tell your friends and we'll all hang out and get spooky together this october and remember that we have another podcast called debut buddies which we do with our friend nate regolia you love him from our previous episodes most recently he was on uh oh i just last week huh I, yes, we do so many week. podcasts. It's been, it's I like a, can't remember which one it's we're been doing. A week. <laughs> um, and he's done. Uh, he did Event Horizon with us and our internet series with us in the past. And I want to call out that um, we will soon have an episode on the first creepy pasta. Yes, over on that feed, and it is so good. It is called Ted the Caver, and it is perfect for spooky season. It was like legitimately creepy. Like I don't get scared by anything, and it gave me goosebumps. Mm-hmm. So go check that out from the dawn of the internet. I'll and put a link in the description. And you can consume it in three different mediums. Yeah, Kelly found a podcast where someone reads it. You can do it straight up on the Angel Fire that it was first created on, or you can watch the movie. Yep, I would say do the Angel Fire. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think we all agree on the Angel Fire. Um, yeah, I don't read yeah. much, and I really enjoyed this one. So, yeah, it is like. Um, light text on a black background so it is hard to read but there are visual aids along the way there are photos throughout and I think that I I lost something by listening to it on the podcast the first way through but I will link to all of this in the in the show notes Um, yeah look forward to that I don't remember when that's coming out uh, but soon go you know what go subscribe to debut yeah, buddies it. and then you'll get it when it comes out straight away you won't even have to think about it and um we will see you next week for bob's burgers the hauntening happy spookies happy spookies <laughs> <laughs>